Welcome to Electron Line and our next challenging problem is two triangles side by side like that. And what we're trying to do here is figure out what this side is equal to in length given that this first triangle, and sometimes it helps just to, to number your triangle, so let's call this triangle number one and let's call this triangle number two. Notice that they're both right triangles. And in order for us to find out what x is equal to, we need to have at least one other side known, either this side here or this side here. Since this side is, is common to the side here for this triangle, it's probably better to find this side using things that we know about triangle number one and then use that to find x for triangle, triangle number two. So that's our strategy. So for triangle number one, what do we know here? We have this angle right here. We know this side, which is the opposite side. And we're trying to find this side here, which is the hypotenuse. So let's call this h sub 1. That's the hypotenuse of triangle number 1. And that's what we're trying to find. So we know the opposite side. We're trying to find the hypotenuse. So what trigonometric function deals with the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Well, that would be the sine. So the definition of the sine of theta is that it's equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And here we're dealing with triangle number one, so we'll call that hypotenuse one. Since we're looking for hypotenuse one, let's solve that equation for hypotenuse one. So we have hypotenuse one equals the opposite side divided by the sine of theta. Of course, in this case, theta is the 70 degree angle, and the opposite side is equal to 10. So let's put that in. We get h sub one is equal to 10 divided by the sine of 70 degrees. And then I just noticed that I don't have my calculator, so I'll be right back to continue this problem. All right, here's my calculator. So 10 divided by the sine of 70, and that's 10.64. All right, so hypotenuse 1 is equal to 10.64. And notice that for triangle number 2, this is the hypotenuse right here. Remember, the hypotenuse is always directly across from the right angle. So this is not the hypotenuse, so let's call this side A. We call it a sub 2 because this is for triangle 2. And notice that, in this case, a sub 2 equals hypotenuse 1. So that's 1 and the same, same length. So now we're going to use this information to solve for x. x is the side adjacent to this angle. So a2 is the opposite side to the angle, and x is the hypotenuse. So this here, let me just write it like this. This is hypotenuse of triangle 2, and that's what we're looking for. So in essence, we're looking for the hypotenuse of triangle 2. We can label it like that. So now we have to have a trigonometric identity which relates the opposite side to the angle and the hypotenuse. Mm, that again would be the sine. So we use for triangle number 2, we use the sine of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, a hypotenuse 2. Since we're looking for a hypotenuse 2 will solve that equation for h2 is equal to the opposite side divided by the sine of theta. And then finally we plug in what those are equal to. Now remember, the opposite side right here uh, to the angle was equal to 10.64. So we'll just put that in there, 10.64, like that. So that's the opposite side. And then the sine of the angle, the angle here is 80 degrees. So h2 is equal to the opposite side, which is 10.64 divided by the sine of 80 degrees. And now we'll have our final answer. And remember, H2, that was the x that we're looking for, the unknown side. So we take 10.64 divided by the sine of 80, and we get 10.8. 10.8. And that's ultimately what we're looking for in this problem. So notice that here we just have to go through a series of trigonometric identities until we get to the side that we're looking for eventually. And since this was the common side of the two triangles, it made a lot of sense to find out what this was equal to in terms of triangle 1 and use that information in triangle 2 to find the unknown in that, that we're looking for in that case. And that's how we do that problem.